Okay, I should stop here. Right? Yes? <laughs> Boss? <laughs> what does that mean? Does anyone else have any more questions? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Kind of ambiguous. You, uh, you talked about the Rasayana of. Is it Rasayana? Rasayana. Rasayana, Rasayana. Of the uh, nectar and pastimes. Yes. And also, the holy name is also like a Rasayana. Oh, yes. And uh, where does the. When we're chanting the bliss that we feel, where, where does that come from? Is that Krishna's pleasure or our pleasure or both of our pleasures? Or how, how does it work? Do you have to analyze it? Because <laughs> then we can see, you know, how to do what you want to Krishna analyze it? If it's from Krishna, then we can use it. Oh, he's pleased now. All bliss is from Krishna. All bliss is from Krishna. All bliss. Even the bliss that the alcoholic gets from the taste of his wine probably is Krishna. Even the most sinful, degraded, horrible, disgusting, evil pleasure someone gets, guess what? That's Krishna. All pleasures are Krishna. He's the reservoir of all pleasure. Rasa Ram talking about Rasa. That doesn't just refer to the taste of water. It refers to any taste. All tastes involve liquid, by the way. You can't do any taste without liquid. Even you can't see if your eyes are dry, you can't hear if there's no wax in your ear, you can't smell if your nose is all dried out. If your skin's all dried out, you can't have any pleasant touch sensation. The reason it even has to be fluid in your brain. I'm talking about liquid, all pleasure is for sure. But I'm not quite sure if that's what you're asking. Because I'd like to know how to please him more. Because if we feel more bliss in one circumstance, then can we say that Krishna is then pleased? And then can we follow in the same way that we. Krishna's pleased if you're chanting his name. That's a given. If you're chanting his name, Krishna's happy. Just like you're happy if people talk about you. Unless they're criticizing you. You know, but if someone's ignored you for a few billion years, you might be happy if they were even criticizing you. At least they're paying attention to you. And we've all had the experience that if there's a room full of people talking and someone says our name, right, they're just this kind of... Oh, somehow I heard it. <laughs> and I feel happy if somebody says my name. I feel happy if anybody notices me at all. So Krishna's also like that. Do you want to know what is the happiness you get when you chant Hare Krishna? Do you want to know what it really is? I have time It's up to you. It's going to take me three or four minutes. It's up to him. He's I got it. I want to be invited back. I like this town. It's one of my favorite places. I don't want to. I don't want to burn out my coming here. Oh, that don't really like how you're being. Oh, she goes so late. No, we can't do anything the rest of the day. Okay. So we talk about pleasing Krishna. So pleasing Krishna, Krishna has an energy of pleasure. What's the name of Krishna's energy of pleasure? Ladini. Who is that? Srimati Radharani. So anytime we're pleasing Krishna, Radharani has to be involved. Anything that pleases Krishna has to involve Radharani. So what's the most pleasing thing to Krishna? When he's with Radharani. When he's directly with Radharani. And he's experiencing the full Wadini. Okay, so Hare Krishna. Who's Hare? Radharani. Who's Krishna? Krishna. What happens when you're saying Hare Krishna? What are you doing? You're bringing God and Krishna together. And that's and, and why does that make us happy? Because who are we? Who are we? We're expansions. My mom so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. We're expansions of Krishna. Or sometimes Prabhupada says we're expansions of Radharani. So when Radha and Krishna are brought together, we feel very, very happy. That, Srila Prabhupada says, is the ultimate uh, or origin of what we're looking for in sexual happiness. 
When we bring together the ultimate male and the ultimate female, we as expansions of them feel satisfied. Millions of times more than just, uh, as one devotee put it, expressing love through secretions. So that is why if somebody's really absorbed in deity worship or really absorbed in chanting or in, in any way really absorbed in pleasing Krishna, they lose material sexual desire. Because it becomes genuinely satisfied, not because you try to kill it. You cannot kill it. Material sex desire is a perversion of our original desire to bring Radha and Krishna together. See tomorrow. Actually, right. Anything you do that pleases Krishna is bringing Radha and Krishna together. And we, you know, experience a little, a little idea of this is if you go to the wedding of a friend or a relative that you really like. Or even if you have some friends you really like and you know your friend comes and says, oh, I found the perfect man, and you feel happy for them. I mean, unless you're really into being a brahmachari. <laughs> Maybe you feel sad. <laughs> the promise that even a sannyasi encourages a, a suitable young man in the marriage ceremony. So generally, when people we love get married or they get engaged, or they, we feel happy. And weddings, you invite your friends, right? So the couple getting married, they want to share their happiness with the family. And the family wants to share their happiness. That's a little idea of what it means that we're happy bringing Radha and Krishna together. As soon as Radha is with Krishna, we feel happy. Ah, oh, Radha with Krishna. Krishna's with Radha. Sita's back with Radha. And if you don't do it to feel happy. You don't say, I'm going to go to my daughter's wedding so I'll feel happy. Who says this? You don't even think about your own happiness. You don't think, I'm going to go to my friend's wedding so I'll... You know, it, it's, not, it's not even in your mind. You're just there decorating the temple and you're buying the presents and you're cooking the feast and you're inviting everybody and all you're thinking is, oh, I hope my friend's happy, I hope my friend's happy, I hope it's a wonderful wedding, I hope it's a wonderful wedding. That's all you're thinking. And think about yourself at all. And there, when you see them getting married and they look at each other, you know, and you think, oh, isn't that nice? And you feel so happy. Naturally, without a separate endeavor for your own happiness. Of course, materially, it's all perverted. But we can get some little idea. So that's what you're doing when you're chanting Hare Krishna. That's what you're doing. You're celebrating the coming together of Radha and Krishna. In, in the most elevated way. Therefore, chanting is the greatest service. And if one really pays attention, you know, if you're at the wedding just sending text messages or looking out the window, you probably won't feel any happiness. But if you're really paying attention, oh, Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Krishna. Now, does Krishna want you to feel happy at his happiness? Yeah, that's the whole point. Don't you want the guests at your wedding to feel happy that you're getting married? Could you imagine? You know, you have a, <laughs> I remember when my daughter got married, I think there were four sannyasis at the wedding. And my daughter said, I'm not sure if that's auspicious or inauspicious. <laughs> <laughs> But could you imagine one of them coming up to the couple afterwards and saying, it's really a shame you guys got married, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you read Bhagavatam about Grahastam life? I mean, what's your problem? Don't you really want to go back to God? I mean, how awful would that be? Or why'd you marry this guy? You should have married so-and-so. You know, what kind of fool are you? I know that happened at a wedding, actually. And the mother of the groom, this is a true story, she went up to the bride right before the ceremony and she said, I don't know why you're marrying him. I have a much better son than him. You should be marrying him. That's not pleasing. You want your guests to also enjoy. You want to share your happiness with your guests. Why do people invite 
10,000 people to their wedding.